it's my good pleasure to uh, share my thoughts today. And uh, uh, the future of finance, of course, is a big phrase. And uh, we know that scholars want to be precise and focused, but I think sometimes it's worthwhile to brainstorm on some of the big picture issues. Um, I would like to uh, start with uh, Tim Harvey's uh, conclusion in his uh, report, in his uh, uh, very interesting uh, paper. Uh, so uh, despite the fact that uh, Ken gave a lot of warnings, but I think he's quite enthusiastic as you can hear from him. And he, he said that ultimately we see DeFi as the greatest opportunity in the coming decade and looking forward to the reinvent of the finance as we know it. Now, that enthusiasm uh, reminds me of uh, that um, in the past several years, I went to United States and London a lot to talk to many colleagues. And I found that when we talk about FinTech, we talk about different things. Uh, in China, uh, FinTech has happened a lot, but without pretty much the arrival of the blockchain. But in the Western world, we pay a lot of the hope on the blockchain and of course it's making a lot of progress. So I think, and that's one of the purpose of we gathering together to talk about what's happening in the future because maybe put together, we can think a little bit different but uh, that's the uh, more a complete picture of what's going on. Now, because we're talking about the future of finance, perhaps we can start by talk a little bit about what are the major functions and challenges of finance. Now, we know that one of the major challenges of uh, the task of finance is to allocate resources uh, using the finance and investment. And uh, another one is to, through the resource allocation, is to incentivize uh, people's uh, activities. And that's always been there, but somehow I think we have paid much more attention to it, especially since we observe how DeFi is, is taking off. Now, but if we think about the, what's the common challenge to, for these tasks to be done, I think it's the, the lack of it's asymmetric information or lack of information, especially the lack of trustworthy information. So that's one problem. And uh, the second problem is that is, I think Ken somehow mentioned is that the, it's the inefficient use of the information. Sometimes information Firstly, we don't have enough information. Second, if even if we, if we do have it, it's trapped in some institutions. And each time when, when we have to do risk assessment, we have to do it repeatedly again and again. So the so result, the consequence is that so most of the resources, the capacities and the, our activities cannot be measured and, uh, and in a trustworthy and efficient way. And therefore it's hard to price them, to transfer them and to, um, to, uh, to trade them. And so the end result is that the finance ultimately thus far have two big problems. One is that it's not very inclusive. Secondly, it doesn't really serve the real economy very well. Now, so my first big picture point, I'm trying to put all those the, the different digital technology that is transforming finance. Um, but my big picture point here is that actually a, a lot can be done by just reducing the cost of acquiring and processing information. So when we think about the digital technology, we obviously have the, besides blockchain, we have a lot of other things. We have the connectivity through the mobile internet and IoT. We have big data. And we have the artificial intelligence, we have cloud computing, and then we have blockchain technology. But without blockchain technology, we have been, we can go very far. And I'm trying to give you some examples of what we experience in China. So China is quickly transforming itself into a somewhat uh, digitized uh, economy and uh, without, with actually without materializing the impact of blockchain yet. And so the, the picture here, what shows is that China's e-commerce as a percentage of the retail, retailing, and it has taken off. Back in 2010, it was actually lagging from many countries, but actually in the past 10 years or so, China's retail sales now, by the end of last year, was about 25%, 27% of the retails, um, retailing. So, and if you look at the mobile payment, 
So now China, so back in 2011, China's mobile payment amount is about 15 billion and the United States about 8.3 billion. So very similar, but now China is like the hundreds times of that United States. So my point here is that without the blockchain yet, China has somehow transformed itself into a mobile style living country uh, with a lot of applications in finance without the much benefit of the blockchain yet. Let me give you a couple of examples. One is the lending. So I'm, used, I'm gonna use the, the case of the my bank. In the past several years, my bank has served, uh, provide lending to more than 20 million SMEs. And half of the entrepreneurs of those are, are women. And uh, they provide this so-called 310 model. It takes three minutes to apply, uh, one second to, to get the funding cross and without uh, with zero uh, personnel interference. And so, uh, and that is also uh, uh, working with the, uh, more than 100 banks to, to do that. So it works, works with financial institutions. So, uh, and that gives the Ben Holmstrom gave the famous claim that information is the new platform. So that's on the one example. Another example is with something we'll call a credit pay. So essentially uh, for the young people in China, uh, three out of four do not have credit cards, but in this, Past several years, uh, Aunt, Aunt Group has been able to provide credit pay to, it's like a, a credit, uh, but it happens at, at when, with a payment. And it ser has served more than 500 million users in China. I'm giving you a couple of uh, 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 pictures to see what's going on here. You can see that during the uh, COVID crisis, uh, before the COVID, and uh, you can see that the, on the left panel, you, you can see that it's the, um, uh, for the uh, for for people con consumers using the uh, use the the blue part bar is the ones they using the credit pay and the and the red bar is the one you, without. But you can see that without the ones without are hurt most. On the right panel, you can see are the merchants. They are the supply side. As you can see, also is the ones that do not use the credit pay, uh, uh, the hurt most. So it's so this will really happen. My point here is that credit pay help, helps both the uh, consumers and the uh, suppliers, especially the, a lot of the SME uh, uh, service providers. So my point, my, that's my first point, is that without the, uh, without the decentralization, without much of the blockchain, uh, if you have the big data, you have the connectivity, uh, uh, you can actually help, you can already help the uh, finance a lot. Make it, make it so much more inclusive. China, China has transformed into a country with more than a billion uh, mobile payment users uh, without the, much of the use of blockchain. Now, then of course, we would like to have the blockchain. Blockchain can solve the problem. I think the make the information, if you have it, it becomes, it becomes much more trustworthy and so it can be transferred. So you don't want this to be trapped into one institution. So I think there are a couple of ways to do this. One way is to use the DeFi to get around the institutions. Uh, and another way is to use the permission uh, chain. That is to, uh, to they have the multiple institutions, but somehow they, they trust the agreed uh, uh, upon the, the, the quality of the information. So, uh, so the, the first part, let me brief mentioning of the, of the DeFi part. Now, uh, despite the, a lot of the concerns, some of the experts already mentioned uh, uh, today, uh, I think the, uh, the DeFi, uh, it starts with the cryptocurrencies has made a tremendous progress. And just some examples, you can see that uh, many of the uh, inst financial institutions that, that, are, that are handling the uh, crypto uh, uh, assets, uh, they, they have uh, huge valuations. For example, uh, Coinbase, its valuation has grown from 5 billion to 100 billion. And you have the PayPal, you started to use the uh, Bitcoin and Robinhood increase from uh, like uh, uh, 11 uh, billion to uh, uh, 40, 40 billion uh, within half a year. Now, and so a DeFi world indeed has, has, uh, has, uh, made, has made a lot of uh, progress. So as back in 2008, we have the Bitcoin, then 2011, we have the Ethereum as the smart contract platform. On top of that, we already have the stable coin that is to make the 
currency more stable and we have the deposit and the lending of the tokens. We have the automated market makers. We have we also have started to anchor the real world asset into the tokens to enter the DeFi world. We also have to enter the enabled the real world information to pass into the smart contracts. Uh, so a lot of progress have been made in the DeFi world. And then, and especially I think the pro, what was most interesting is how they use the tokens to incentivize all stakeholders. Indeed, the, the whole DeFi world grown by, by financing itself. So I think it's really, we can see how a lot of the progress has, has been made. But there, of course, it has a lot of limitation of the DeFi world. I think the, the one major problem is the Chalama uh, beautifully explained by uh, Marcus Mayer uh, and in his papers. Basically, the, if you want to get around the uh, current institutions, the cost of proving everything is so high. So it's just, it's very hard to be efficient. And so it's not only the scalability issue, also that we have the uh, call this Oracle problem. But, so basically it's actually, there's a lot of the, because the, the real world is based on the institutions. So if you want to get around the, those, a lot of things, then basically you are very far from the real world. So you, in a sense that you, you are not serving the real world of, uh, very well yet, you are kind of far from it. So that's a huge problem of the DeFi besides its compliance issues. Um, but I think the DeFi, as I said, it already made huge progress, especially with the digitized assets, as we know for this beautiful I'm not sure how beautiful it is, the, the, the picture, but we can see that it's also already worth like uh, $69 million. Uh, so I think the combination of the DeFi and the digitized based asset is likely to take off, but still there's a huge real economy that there's very little trust worth information that can be put into the uh, DeFi world. So that is a huge, huge problem if you want to be as inclusive as uh, Cam Harvey has hoped. So that brings us back to the progress of the permission, permissioned uh, blockchain. Now that I want to bring, uh, introduce to some experience from the on chain, uh, which is the uh, permission chain uh, 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 powered by, uh, by on group. So it has, uh, it has uh, something to claim that it has, is now being, uh, on chain has been used for the, uh, in, used in more than 50 uh, use cases. Yeah, more than a million companies are connected using OnChain. It has uh, more than 100 million items uh, to be uploaded uh, onto the uh, uh, OnChain. And it has the number one acc accumulation of the patents of the blockchain in the world. And now, and I don't have time, but basically it tries to uh, provide the basic uh, the infrastructure uh, for the, for the uh, permission uh, blockchain. It has the the, the basic technology on top of that it has the a smart contract platform then it, it can support finance support other daily use uh, uh, daily life use cases and also the uh, for public uh, services now I, let me give you several examples uh, one example is that is the it can you products uh, tracing is uh, on the e-commerce platforms to make sure they are trustworthy and so that has increased uh, uh, increased the, the, the sales uh, by by a lot. And so actually, uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of items on the uh, Alibaba's uh, e-commerce platform, the uh, the categories of products they are on chain, and uh, their reputation, the, the negative uh, uh, review uh, rates actually decreased by fifty percent. And so it, the, somehow they are more trustworthy. And another good example is the is the jurisdiction. A chain now uh, out of the the about uh, 3,800 uh, 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 ju uh, courts uh, ju ju jurisdiction courts in China, about 3,200 of them now actually can uh, can use the uh, evidence from blockchain uh, 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 from ju ju jurisdiction chain uh, yet and uh, um, or already now another well, I'm example just giving you a two minute warning. Okay, I think almost that's good. Uh, so then uh, another thing is the electronic, uh, electronic signature. It's not uh, uh, on group, but it's one of the uh, students I have in China. So what it does is that this just gives you several numbers. Uh, some of the, so, so all the documents will be uh, digitized 
And now it's only about several percent, but I'm, they're really progressing very fast. And as, as my student predicts, he's an entrepreneur, that within three or five years, I think he, he think about half of the contracts, all the contracts will be uh, digitized. And they, as you can see, they can be used to be in the course, of course, they can be used to support financing because they represent the, and, and also based on the smart contracts that can be settled quickly. And finally, another interesting example is the fam is the selling the uh, the uh, the uh, the movie tickets. And now it, this used it used the tokens, and it found that much increased the the power because the the the, the fans are, are able to. Uh, they can uh, uh, promote this to their friends, this or that. So you can you can see that the, the power, as we see uh, in the Western world, in the DeFi world, then you can see that the the, the marketing power from one yuan to three one once yuan spending of the marketing uh, that leads to from three yuan to five years. But anyway, so let me conclude. My point here is that. I see different type of te uh, digital technology, and they are all shaping uh, the future of finance. It's happening right now. So my belief is that the DeFi will integrate better with the digital world and progress, make a lot of progress, as we already know. It will also be accepted by more institutions. Those institutions can issue tokens and digital assets and enter into the DeFi world. So as a lot of the participation, I think that's exciting. But still, um, they whatever they do is they if they want to serve the real economy well, the real economy needs to be uh, the trust trustworthy information needs to be um, uh, digitized, and that uh, probably has to be through the permissioned uh, uh, blockchain, and that uh, that will also, will, will also happen help the finance a lot, and that that trustworthy information can be, work with the in the DeFi world, all the transformed uh, financial institutions, including those exchanges and the funds, you know, the, the ones that uh, who ask the Cam Harvey that how long can we survive? I think they are trying to making the change too. So in the end, then we believe I believe that the digital technology, including blockchain, are transforming finance at least in three ways. One way is the much better connectivity, collecting and processing information through, and that can lead to financial inclusion. It's already happening a lot, tremendously in some countries like China and other places too. And then we have the DeFi and the digitized world. And then we have the finance based on permission chain, uh, which actually uh, is connect much closer to the real economy. So I don't think the three groups, they conflict with each other. And I don't think they replace each other. And, but Together, they are making finance much more inclusive, accessible, and affordable. And the key is to have all the resources, capacity, and activities measurable in, in an efficient and trustworthy way. The goal is to improve the two goals we talked about in the beginning. That's to improve asset allocation and to motivate economic activities. And so, so I think that's the, 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 the they're going to force in, in, in some way. So let me summarize. I'm going to summarize by slightly rephrase uh, what Cam Harvey uh, uh, not started. I think that's great, but I want to refer to a little bit from my point of view. That is, finance is an information-based activity and digital technology is inf revolution of information. So ultimately, uh, we, be we believe digital technology will be the greatest opportunity of the, of the coming force to, uh, to, to the reinvention of finance as we know. Thank you.